Hey everyone, my name is Sam Tilly and today I'm going to be doing a video on some of the moves from Dangun and Dosan and how you perform them correctly. Dangun and Dosan are the second and the third ITF patterns in Taekwondo and I have got a full breakdown step by step of the videos which I will link up here for both of them on my YouTube channel already. But we'll get started with the movements on their own. So, face in the front, heels together, arms out to the side, chariot, kunye. Okay, so starting with Dangun. The first move in Dangun is an L stance like a garden block. This goes to your left. So for a garden block, you might have done this before in some of my other videos. A lot of the kicks start and finish in L stance forearm garden block, which has your hands closed. Okay, so a forearm garden block, your knuckles are the same height as your shoulder. Your other hand is upside down closed on your solar plexus. This is also in L stance, which is 70% of your weight on your back leg, 30% on the front. The difference between this and a knife hand garden block is the positioning of your front hand. So for the first one, my knuckles are the same height as my shoulder. Then for my knife hand garden block, my fingertips are the same height as my shoulder. So my hand drops just slightly so that my fingertips are in this position. And the other hand is open again. It's just in front of your solar plexus here. So the first move, L stance, knife hand garden block. You also see that my hands come behind me and then in front to get power. So if a lot of the blocks that you do in Taekwondo, you cross your hands and they both twist to get power. For this one, they come behind you and then forward. So they don't stop at the back and then come forward. It's not a straight line, straight back. It's a continuous motion behind you and then in front. So from here, my hands are gonna come back and then carry on traveling forwards. Okay, so let's just practice a few of these on each side because it is on both sides in Danga. So I'm gonna go to my left, L stump sniping line. And then back to ready, and then to my right. So again, my hands are going to come behind me on the other side this time. Back to ready, other side, so left. Back to ready, right. Back to ready, one more on each side, left. And back to ready, and then on the right. Good. And back to ready. You'll also notice when I'm doing my moves that I'm slow until the end, and at the end you throw your full power and full force. Okay, so you're not tense the whole time, bring your arms back tense and bring them forwards tense. You're relaxed until that last bit, and then you twist and you throw your power at the end of the move. Okay, so that's the first move, the first new move in Dangler. The second one we're going to do is the twin forearm block, and that looks like this. L stance twin forearm block. Again, you do this on both sides in Danga. Okay, so from here, the crossing of the hands is slightly different to any of the blocks that you've done so far for your low block, middle block, high block, and rising block. You cross with both hands facing in towards you. Okay, so the one that does the rising block is furthest away from me. Okay, so if I'm doing a right hand rising block here, that hand is furthest away from my face. So here, palms facing in, and then I twist out. My hands twist out, so my front hand here, which is the same as the front leg, looks a bit like a high block, but it's the same height as your shoulder. Okay, so you're twisting out, and you're using your outer forearm here, this part, to block, and then your other hand, using your outer forearm like a rising block to protect your head. So again, like if you're doing a rising block, make sure your whole arm is above your head, not just your hand like this, otherwise you're still gonna get hit. Also make sure you've got about one hand gap between your hand, your head and your arm, so your hand, your hand isn't resting on your head like this, because if it is and then you get hit, you're just gonna hit yourself in the head and it's gonna hurt. So in this position here, twisting your hands out and holding them here. So let's practice a few of these on each side. Let's go to our left first. So from here to our left, L stance swing forearm. 
and then back to ready, and then to my right. Good. And back to ready, to my left again. And then to my right. So again, just making sure you're crossing correctly. So as I go to my left, my right hand, which is the rising block, is furthest away from my face, both palms facing in towards me. So I'm twisting out. And then as I'm going onto my right leg, my left hand is gonna be furthest away from my face, and I'm gonna twist out into this position. So left hand further away, palms in towards me again. So two more of these to my left. And then to my right. Good. And back to ready. Okay, the last move I'm gonna teach you in Dangan is also in l stance. So all three of these moves are in l stance. These are the only l stances in Dangan. Everything else is in walking stance. So, I'm gonna to go to my left first, and I'm gonna do a knife hand strike in l stance. Okay, so from here, back to back, strike and hand on top. So this is the same as your low block, your high block, and your rising block. So I'm striking with this hand here. This one is gonna twist out, and this one is gonna come back to my hip, and they're gonna move and finish at the same time, okay? So, L starts, knife hand strike. From here, crossing my hands, and then striking out like this. This is L starts again, so 70% of the weight on my back leg. Then the other side as well. So this time I'm using my right hand, so my right hand is on top, back to back. Strike across, left side. And then right side. Good, one more on each side. And back to ready. So when you're doing all of your moves, so these are moves from patterns, you want to make sure you're looking at where you're striking, because when you're doing a pattern, it's a sequence of moves against an imaginary opponent. So if I'm striking over here, if I'm looking over here or up here, then I wouldn't really be striking the opponent that I'm attacking because I wouldn't be able to see them. So you make sure you're looking at where you're striking. Quite commonly, when people start learning patterns, they look at the floor rather than looking up. So you always want to look at where you are striking. Okay, the next moves that we're going to learn then are moves from Dosan. So Dosan also has the L stance knife hand guide. I'm not the first move that we learn. The one we're going to do this time is a walking stance. Straight fingers at thrust. We are going to practice this on both sides. In Dosan, it is only on your right side, but as you go up through the passage, you do do it on the other side as well. So we are going to practice it on both sides. We're going to start with our right though. So we step forwards into a walking stance, right leg in front. Just to recap a walking stance, it should be one and a half shoulder widths long and one wide. So if you've got your back foot turned out to the side like this with your legs straight and your feet are on the same line like this, this is not a walking stance. You need to take your feet further apart, both feet facing this way, your back foot is just slightly off target, off centre, it's 25 degrees out to the side. Okay, so from here, we're going to do our straight fingers at thrust, and you're going to have your left hand come down in front of you like this, and then your right hand is going to strike over the top. Okay, so it's basically resting across your fingers like this. This one does come down first and this one follows, but it happens so quickly that it almost looks like they're together. So from here, I'm going to step forwards, one, two, okay? And again, stepping forwards, one, two. And with your fingertip thrust, because you're striking with the end of your hand, you pull back your middle finger, so it's in line with the other two, so you've got a bigger surface area that you're hitting with. This is the same for any moves where you're striking with the end of your hand. You always pull, whether it's just a normal finger to thrust, a straight finger to thrust, an upset finger to thrust, you always pull back your middle finger. If you're doing a knife hand strike, or anything where you're using the side of your hand, you do not pull back your middle finger, because you're striking with this part of your hand, 
rather than the end. So the moves of practice earlier would have been flat hands, but for this one it's middle finger back. Okay, so practice it again, stepping forwards right leg, straight fingers in front, and one more on my right. Okay, now let's practice on our left. So I'm gonna go left leg forwards, my right hand is gonna come down, and my left hand is gonna go over the top. Again, I'm pulling my middle finger back. So from here, good. So this one does come down first, this one's over the top, but it's so quick, it almost looks like they're together. And again. Good, and again. Make sure this one is coming forward, it's not coming down on top, you're not chopping, you are striking at the end of your hand. One more on our left. Good. And back to ready. Okay, the next block that we're going to practice is our wedging block. So this is, again, is in dosan, it's in walking stance, and you do do this on both sides. A wedging block looks like this, and you're breaking apart a twin fist punch. So if someone was attacking you like this, you're going to get your hands on the inside, and you're going to break apart that twin fist punch, okay? So from here, stepping forwards, Hands come in, you cross, and then they both twist at the end. Okay, so this is between your eye and your nose height, like this. My elbows are just slightly bent at this angle here, so they're not completely straight, slightly at this angle. So from here, stepping forwards, wedge your block. Hands come in, break apart. Good, and then let's try the other side as well. Hands come in, so my hands facing towards me like this, and then break apart. And left side, hands in, break apart. Right side. Good, now let's press them with a bit of power. So from here, left side, so you're breaking apart that top of this punch. And then right side, good. Left side, good. Right side, good, one more on each side. Good, and back to ready. Okay, so that is all of the moves in Dosan that are new. So you've got your wedging block and you've got your Okay, so that's all of the new moves from Dangun and Dosan. I'm just going to do a quick run through of the patterns, not in detail, I'm just going to show you where these moves are. So in Dangun, you've got the first move, which is to your left. So this is your l sans knife and garden block. You then carry on with a high punch, same on the other side. l sans knife and garden block. You then got another high punch. You then come to the front of the room with your walking stance low block. You have three high punches. I'm just going to show you these on the spot so that you can see my feet for the next part of the pattern. So from here, this is when we do our L stance twin forearm block. I keep my front foot glued to the floor and I spin all the way around backwards. L stance twin forearm blocks. This is the second one that we practice. Then it carries on with a punch. Then you've got the same on the other side. This is your L stance twin forearm block again. And then we've got our punch. You already know from learning Chunji how to do your low block and also from the basic blocks video how to do your rising block as well. I will link this video in case you haven't learned the crossing for your low blocks and rising blocks. It's then followed by three rising blocks. One, two, three, and then we come to our third new move. We rotate, L stance, knife hand strike, finish with a punch. L stance, knife and strike on the other side, finish with a punch. So that was the new ones from Dangun. Then we'll quickly run through the new ones from Dosan. So it starts with a high block punch. Again, the crossing for the high block is in the basic blocks video, which I've already linked before. So from here to your left, high block like this, and then on the spot punch, step, turn, high block, on the spot punch. Now we have our L stance knife and garden block, which we've learned from our new moves in Dangun. We then step forwards, straight fingertip thrust. From here we release 
and we spin all the way around into back fist in walking stance. We pivot around, same as the beginning of the pattern, it's high block on the spot punch, step, turn, high block on the spot punch. Now we do the next one, new moves, our wedging block. So it's left leg first, wedging block, we're breaking apart as with this punch, front snap kick, two punches, then onto the other side, wedging block again, right leg this time, front snap kick, two punches, then we have our rising block again, and another rising block. We finish with our knife hand strike, which we've already learned today. This one is in sitting stance, rather than in L stance, and we finish with the same on the other side, knife hand strike in sitting stance. Back to ready. So, I hope you've enjoyed that video. That was a few of the basic moves. I am going to be doing more videos going through the rest of the patterns and all of their new moves as well. Please comment down below any other new videos that you want to see, and I will tag all of the videos that I tagged earlier in the video down below in the description, so look out for those links if you miss them. Okay, heels together, arms out to the side, chariot, kunye, type one.